Good afternoon, everybody. It's Monday. Man, it's supposed to rain for sure tonight. So we tried to come out here while we had a little bit of good weather. Falling those trees on the hillside, setting them up here, and chipping them. Well, we came into an issue with the track chipper. Look at that lower feed wheel. Now we got this thing used, but uh, the lower feed wheel had broken before, like right when we got it. The welds broke, held it onto the drum, and pulled that out and fixed it. When we put it back together, apparently we didn't get it tight enough or needed to retorque them and probably needed some Loctite. So these bolt holes, all the bolts fell out. I just thought I'd share this with you guys because these bolts don't want to stay in there now. Like save their lives. I get them tight, then they come right back out. And I think they're really screwed now. So I'm gonna try her one more time, at least get her back together, see what happens. Because they only they thread into three eighths, and then there's these short little doggers. The bolts are fine, but that apparently got screwed up. So in a last ditch effort, I tried to put it all back together and possibly tighten the bolts even harder and keep an eye on it, but the two upper bolt holes are completely wallered out, washed out. Half inch bolts go in there and they just slid in and out with zero thread traction whatsoever. So I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna take it home the next day, pouring rain, went out there and snagged this thing, bring her back to the shop and we're gonna fix it correctly. Yeah, there ended up being a couple more issues with the rig. Sad but true, there's a couple weak links with the old bandit, but we're going to address them, fix this thing better than ever. So what the problem here is, if you couldn't tell, for you up so you can see a little better now. That bolt hole and that bolt hole into this, shoot this is only like, it might be 3 8 looks like quarter inch. But that's all it threads into, so we're going to drill that out bigger and put a bigger bolt in it since it wallered those holes out, but I need to take this apart. You get these hoses out of the way. I'm going to try and break the locking pin out, and then I can hopefully take the pump off and just hang it over here because we, yeah, we just had this part. Sucks. Man, oh man, is that my gate right now? Yeah, we're going to need impact on that. <laughs> Sweet. Not the way it's supposed to go, but that's the way it went. So, whatever. What a chance. Oh, gosh dang. That's not bad at all. I gotta get the old tranny flat in there. Hold her up. That thing is not light. Where you at, bud? Oh, crap. There we go. I broke these free with the wrench. You'd think they'd use hardened steel for this because it's kind of a wear spot. But these bolts didn't show any fatigue. Yeah, I don't know. That one's got just a slight bit, but I mean, it's got one, its threads are like 99% intact. That literally took us like oh, freaking a two hours the other day and I just did it in 10 minutes by myself that is knowing how to take it apart knowing what tools and everything I guess that comes in part of it and uh, well the fact that it already came apart once so walked right out 
You guys want some pine branches? I'll send them to you. Buy a t-shirt, I'll send you a branch. Uh, yep, those are wallered out. Old V-belt's on the way with the magnetic drill. We'll drill those things out. Tap a uh, bigger bolt size in it. More goop on a little bogger. Oh. Super, super sticky. Cutting oil. Let me catch you up to speed. This is a replacement for the bolts that came out of it. That is one inch and it's a half by 13 thread. It waller those out so much with those little guys. We're gonna put this in here. I gotta cut this one down to a one inch, but we're gonna put five eighths by 11 back in there. So we have to drill through. It's not that big a deal. There's a lot of meat on the bearing. Drill through that, and then we gotta drill and tap the wall on the other side. Brought the Milwaukee magnet rig, but we're going old school. Punch up old. Imagine these two being tight, a little red lock tight, the extreme old permanento one. I don't know if you would want to redo those bottom two, I think they're alright. Because by how much torque I gave them yesterday. Yeah, I'd say we redo them all. I don't have to worry about them for a little while, maybe. I only bought five bolts, so that's all I had. So we came up with a plan so that we could keep everything nice and square, make sure the bolt holes were drilled in the correct spot because they're wallered out. There's no telling if you sink a drill bit into the machine in a wallered out hole where it's going to really land. Uh, so we took the bearing off of the feed wheel, mounted it back up to the machine using the two lower bolts that were not damaged. The threads were perfectly fine with those. Drilled through the bearing with the correct drill bit size for the 5 8 Drilled through the bearing, through the machine, and once we were done with our, uh, the bearing was pretty much a guide. Uh, once we were done with that, then I took the drill press, drilled through, made sure that those holes were nice, true, straight, accurate. A drill press is so simple, they're not really that expensive, and they save so much time. Even Lady Taylor came down the shop with little Callahan. He's our new baby boy. Just had him. He was actually born the day after my birthday, so we're excited to have Sir Callahan in the shop, getting him, you know, used to being in the environment. He likes watching car shows, I'll tell you. Oh, brother. Open up something too. Oh. Oh. That's just the way it was rubbing. That's the way it was rubbing. Let's see here. Grab that thing. Man. Needs to go up. Yeah, we need our Oh, it needs to, the outside piece needs to go that way. Towards the engine on the tipper. And how we ended up that far off. Out there, huh? Oh, it was terribly muddy. Coming down that bank? Yeah. <laughs> Where's one of those old bolts there? Look how much more serious that looks now. It looks like somebody actually is taking pride in it. It's got a little robustness to it compared to. Those are two bolts. Yeah, I got one in my hand. <laughs> I mean, there is a pretty big difference between half inch and a five eighth bolt. It's about two hours worth of drill and tap machine and kind of stuff to make it work, but 
These were about as big as we could go. I had to dremel just a little bit on the sides to fit those in. Round this one a little bit. Put all of them went in. Nice and easy. Now we got to take it all apart and cut these bolts to the right length. And if you didn't notice, we don't have a 13 millimeter Allen. Where'd the gun go? So I stuck an exhaust bolt in there. Yeah, this has worked. Hey, like that chair there. 300,000 mile shotgun seat. Where's the seatbelt? Any seatbelts back in the day? We'll just roll this thing in there and we'll put the bearing and everything on the side of it once it's already in there. You see those thick welds where the shaft meets the drum? Yeah, that's where the thing broke before. It's yeah, it's pretty tight. What a pain in the butt. I'm also happy afterwards. I have expected everyone to be cheering for me in the DMV office. Yeah. Good job, dickhead. Get out. <laughs> Now that we got that part figured out and on there, she spins nice. Next thing we're going to address is these little rubber bumpers because this goes back and forth on it. I turned this and it popped a hole through it like immediately. So put a hose clamp down here with a radiator hose. What we're going to do is instead of having a quarter inch wide surface area, I'm going to cut out a chunk of it and then put in a piece that's about an inch and a half wide so that it's got more surface area and it won't just break through that thing. See if I got some green paint. If not, she'll get the standard black treatment. Nice little weld on her. Now instead of having like a three-eighths worth of, I don't know, surface area, we've got an inch and a half. So that little rubber stopper shouldn't wear out in the first 13 seconds like it did before. Exposing another weak point, and we discovered that where this thing rattles back and forth, it's got a wear block up here for the outside, but for the inside, I don't know, maybe perhaps if we got new wear blocks for out here, it wouldn't walk around so much in there. Maybe those just need to be replaced. But it is definitely chewing it up on this side, so. By used, plan on working on it. Oh, oh yeah, that's, that's a lot better. Eh, that'll work. Oh, Jesus. Now we gotta put this the right way. Mm -hmm. Big guy on the top. Something like that. Yeah, that's that's right. That's right. Okay, gotta get up in there, bud. Yeah. I'm gonna have to get one of those bigger Milwaukee ratchet. This little guy just donked it out, but shoot. Ooh, not bad, really. That saved me like 10 minutes worth of get in there. Little, little rig. Come on, baby. I guess it would have been like that. <laughs> Well, she's loaded up going back to the job tomorrow. 
I feel a lot better about all this. The bigger bolts, having those pads on there, we'd have to take this motor off to get to this one to put that in there. So we're going to try this for now. Put a new piece in there with a hose clamp. That'll give it a little bit more something to bounce off of. But thing just clicked over 1,900 hours when I loaded it up. That is by far the weakest link to the machine, I would say, that we've discovered so far. But we're going to keep pressing on with it. Again, we did buy it used. We ran it for 50 hours now and probably put, shit, 30 hours of work into it. That's what you get when you buy used. But this thing does make the money. So, haul her to the job tomorrow and we'll see how she does. Well, we finished that last job with the track chipper. We're on a new one. Look how many trees we got to drop. That'll be in the next video. But it's, uh, I think Dad just cut down 140 of them in the last two hours while I was gone. We bit it for one day job, so it should be pretty nice with the track chipper if it stays together. But I think, you know, the more and more I thought about it, because when we first got this thing, it had the rubber bumper up here on this one, but it was worn out so you could turn it so it'd be hitting something. This is actually working pretty good having a hose clamp on there it's not actually destroying that would like to cut it off and do the same thing we did down here and have those wide plates because this one is doing perfect but the more i thought about it i did wrap a bunch of electrical tape you slice into it with a knife and you can get like 50 layers plus on there it just it walked right through that didn't even last at all but i'm thinking since it had so much of a vibration clacking around on this that it caused these bolts to walk out and yes, could have put Loctite on it, should have in the beginning. Uh, I don't think I needed to tighten these ones up anymore. But the reason I say that side walked out is because same bolts taken out by us and put in back by us on this side and the other side. Because to take this lower feed wheel out, you got to take both sides out. These ones didn't walk out at all. They were perfectly fine. So I'm thinking since that other guy didn't have those rubbers on there, was the cause of the problem. So... Yes, we did have the lower feed wheel. It broke. We had to, dad re -weld it. He said he spent about 16 hours fixing that lower feed wheel, getting it centered and everything, and it works great. But come over here, and these bolts walking out on us now, instead of having a half inch bolt thread on there, we got five eighths. So it bumped up quite a bit. It's a quite a bit bigger of a bolt. So gave her the reef, scratched it so I can tell if it backs out or not. And having this on there, I think that helped out a lot because it doesn't have that vibration so those shouldn't come out. So Bandit, you need to put wider pads on here so these things don't wear out. Like these are probably never gonna wear out with this big pad on there. That's gonna take a long, long time because of its surface area. Up here, that thing is gonna wear out probably another 
10, 15 hours. I'll try to put another piece of something on there. But that, that hose clamp somehow is actually helping it quite a bit. Probably put something on the hard hitting side because this side over here doesn't get too much. But anyway, I'm going to wrap it up here. I'm fueling. It is Friday, kind of late. Look at Boone. Eee. Got to feel that and we're headed out of here. But hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you buy a Bandit, buy anything. Uh, new or used, honestly, you just plan on needing to do some TLC on it. Knock on wood, but the 080, man, that thing has just been an absolute beast. I haven't had to work on that thing too much, hardly at all. And I put, oh shoot, it's closing in on 3,000 hours now. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.